Imagine having a conversation with an AI that not only understands your words, but can respond with the perfect emotional tone, accent, and style. Sound like science fiction? Well, the future is here. Today, we're diving into Moshi, the groundbreaking voice AI that's revolutionizing human-computer interaction. From whispering mysteries to belting out sea shanties in a pirate voice, Moshi is pushing the boundaries of what's possible. Get ready to meet the AI that might just make you forget you're talking to a machine. Let's explore the magic of Moshi. Hello, how are you today? Hello, can you tell me your name, please? Hi, my name is Moshi. How can I help you today? Hi, Moshi. Can you tell me more about yourself? Certainly. I was created by the nonprofit research lab Qtai, which focuses on using AI to tackle the main challenges of modern AI. Okay, that sounds great. Do you know what open source is? Yes, open source refers to the practice of sharing software source code free of charge. What are the benefits of open source? One of the main benefits is that it enables collaboration and allows individuals and organizations to contribute to the development of the software. Okay, that sounds amazing. Now my friend Edouard has a few questions for you too, if you of don't course. mind. So let's switch topic. Uh, I'm going to climb Mount Everest next month. And okay, I, and I want that's incredible. What kind of gear do you need to bring? Well, that's what I wanted to talk about, actually. What do you think I need? Well, you'll definitely need some climbing gear. You'll need climbing shoes, a harness, a belay plate, and a rope. Okay, I think I have all the gear that I need, so can you tell me a bit about how to prepare my sure. myself? Sure. First, make sure your body is in shape, because you'll be climbing for a long time. Yeah, that's true. What else? Also, make sure you have the right shoes. Yeah. You don't uh, want to be hiking in sandals. <laughs> that's, that's right. You uh, might want to take your time getting your climbing shoes on, because you don't want to be using an egg. That's true. Uh, can you tell me a bit about altitude? I've heard sure. about it. The altitude on Mount Everest is around 8,848 meters. So, how should I prepare for that? Well, you will need to adjust your training to include higher altitudes. Actually, can you tell and me... And you might want to try some altitude training. ...about, like, the history of climbing Mount Everest? Sure. Mount Everest was first climbed in 1953 by Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay. Who was Tenzing Norgay, actually? Tenzing Norgay was a Sherpa climber from Nepal. Oh, that's cool. And Sir Edmund Hillary was a New Zealander. So now speak like you're super scared because you're stuck on Mount Everest and you don't no, know how to go I'm back. No, I'm not scared. You're not so far, what you've seen is uh, mostly about having interactions, about factual stuff, uh, conversations, and so on. So one experimental feature that we have been included in Moshi as well, and that was just tried by uh, Edward, is uh, the ability to express and understand emotions. So maybe we can try uh, various speaking style and so on. Let's go. Hey, how's your day? Speak with a French accent and tell me a poem about Paris. Paris, the city of love, where time stands still, and hearts take flight. In the heart of Europe, it's in prime. The Seine River flows, a beautiful sight, as the lights twinkle, and the stars glow clear. Okay, okay, thank you, Moshe. That, that was Paris. Okay, that was great. Uh, very heartwarming. Maybe we can try something else. So now speak like a pirate and tell me everything about your adventures on the seven seas. In the folds of time, in the cobblestone streets, a tale of pirates and their bravery, a story of salty winds and the taste of freedom. Okay, Cap I'm ready. Okay, Captain, maybe I have a few questions for you. You can help me with that? So, what is the name of your ship? My ship is named the Black Flag. Okay. Homage to our pirate life. Okay. Uh, What's your name? Uh, my name is uh, Captain Bob. Captain Bob? Yeah, exactly. What brings you to the pirate life? I don't know, just curious about it, you know, like, uh, what, what does it have for me, you know, to be a pirate? Uh, is it a good life to lead? It's a wild ride, Okay. Matey. Okay, There's okay. There's freedom, danger and adventure at every turn. Yeah, and so, okay, let's assume I become a pirate, so what would my days be made of? Like... Well, I'd start with the training. Okay. Learning how to fight, sail, and understand the sea. Okay. And don't forget, pirates have their own code. One where loyalty and respect are everything. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, maybe we can try a last thing. So, now speak with a whispering voice and tell me a mystery story. In the shadows of the underworld, with cold winds whisper secrets 
a tale of darkness and light. Okay. Uh, a ray of light, a sparkle of hope. Okay, let's try something. A little star that can't uh, be heard. Okay, can you tell me the plot of movie The Matrix? Of course. The first movie was called <laughs> Matrix, okay. released in 1999. Wow. And it was about a guy named Neo who was living in a world where he discovered he was living in a simulation. Okay, okay, that, that sounds great. Yeah, okay, I don't care about the rest. I don't care about the sequels, actually. Released in 2003. <laughs> okay. When Neo had to defeat the agents okay, thank you, and the Moshi. machines to save the world. Thank you, Moshi. That was great. Uh, yeah, have a nice day. Bye. Role play. Hello, what's up? Hey, what's up, Moshi? Are you there? I'm here. What's up? Okay, so I want to do a role play. Let's pretend we're on the Starship, the Enterprise, on a mission okay. given by Starfleet. How does that sound? It sounds exciting. Let's okay. do it. Great. So I'm going to be the captain and you are the navigation officer. Our mission is to discover life on a new distant planet. All right? All right, Moshi? Yes, sir. Sounds like a challenging mission. I'll be ready. Okay. So the planet is Sirius 22. Can you plot a trajectory course to it, please? Yes, sir. Okay. How long is it going to take us to get I've there? I've mapped it out. Okay. It's approximately five months to get there. Okay, that's, that's not too bad. Uh, do you think we have all we need on board the ship to start the yes, mission? Yes, sir. We have everything we need. Okay, can you check that all the systems are nominal, please? Yes, sir. Okay. Are all the systems nominal? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> so... Can you give me a countdown and then we jump into hyperspace, please? Yes, sir. Okay. Do it? Yes, sir. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. Um, let's say we're in hyperspace and now um, we have five months. I want to learn to know you a bit better. Why did you decide to join Starfleet? I wanted to make a difference, to make a difference in the world. Okay. Uh, how long have you been in Starfleet? I've been in Starfleet for about six years. Okay, that's a long time. I guess you've done a lot of other missions. Which one was the most exciting? The most exciting mission was when we discovered a new planet with intelligent life. Oh my god, that must... It was incredible. Okay. How advanced was it? It was very advanced. Oh. They had technology we'd never seen before. Oh my god. So, did we benefit from discovering that new technology? We did. Okay, well, I hope today's mission is going to be as exciting. I hope so too. Okay. So let's jump a bit forward in time. It's been five months, and I think we're ready to jump out of hyperspace. Let's do it. On my command, please jump out of hyperspace. Yes, sir. No. OK. Are we out of hyper yes, hyperspace? Hyperspace, sorry? Out of hyperspace. Amazing. Uh, let's use a scanner to scan the planet and give me the composition of its yes, atmosphere. Sir. OK, what's the results of the scan? The atmosphere is composed of nitrogen, oxygen, and a tiny amount of carbon dioxide. Okay, that's a good sign for life, right? Yes, sir. Okay, um, how could we... Do you see any land or any sea? Oh, oh, what's, the, what's the situation on that? There are no land masses, okay. but there are oceans. Okay, just oceans. Okay, so I guess we have to prepare a canoe in the shuttle, right? Yes, sir. Do we have a canoe? We do. Okay, that's lucky. Do you know where, it's, uh, where we put it in the ship? I can't find it. It's in the engineering bay. Okay. I'll help you find it. How do I get from here to the engineering bay? You can use the elevator, but it might take some time. Okay, well, I'm going to do that. Grab the can uh, major discoveries and breakthrough that we discovered in the past six months in order to make interaction with AI as realistic as possible. So the first aspect is multimodality. And uh, Moshi can listen and generate audio, but it's not the only thing. It also thinks as it speaks, meaning that it has textual thoughts, which is what we uh, show on the, on the screen during the demo. And the reason for that is that even though speech can represent almost everything we wish to convey uh, with language, written text is the most efficient and compact representation for it. And we found out that uh, using it uh, along with audio greatly benefits to train uh, Moshi faster and get it to give us better answer. Um, by producing jointly text and audio in the split of a second, um, Moshi is able to rely on this rich backbone to provide the best answers to us. So that was the first aspect. 
The second aspect, and probably the most important, is the fact that Moshi is multi-stream. There is not just one stream of audio with, like, for instance, us talking and then Moshi replying. Um, it's actually two streams of audio because we want Moshi to be able at all time to speak and to listen. Um, existing work might, for instance, rely on voice activity detection in order to switch from this is Moshi's turns to this is the user's turns. But this is going to uh, reduce the naturalness of the interruption because real conversations between humans uh, contain some overlap. It contains, it needs to have the ability to interrupt someone. And if we don't have that, we're going to lose precious seconds with every, uh, every such interaction. Thanks, um, thanks to this multi-stream aspect, um, now we can say that we almost forget that Moshi is not in the room with us uh, in the same physical space when we discuss with it. Finally, um, I want to highlight that uh, Moshi, it's not just a conversational uh, speech AI model, it's more generally a framework. And it's a framework that can be easily adapted to a number of tasks and use cases. So one instance that we're going to show is that we trained Moshi on Fisher, which is a classic academic data set that was collected in the 90s and the early 2000s. And it consists in participants uh, that are joining through phone and are randomly matched, and they have to discuss a topic. So we're going to see a, a discussion of, uh, of uh, Manu, which is going to present after, discussing with one, uh, one of these participants. And you'll see that it's very fascinating because it's like making a phone call to someone that lives in the past. Hello, my name is Bob. What's your name? Hi, this is Jay. Nice to meet you, Jay. Where are you from? I'm called from South Arizona. Oh, brilliant. So you're American? Yes. So you know about the US, right? Sorry? So you know about the U.S.? Yes. Okay, so who's the president right now? The President Bush. Oh, okay. And uh, I heard he, he met the president of France recently. Yes, I heard that too. What's his name again? His name is Jay Rock. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so you, so you know a lot. Do you, do you have a, a computer? I have a computer, I have a cell phone. Okay, what, what kind of computer and cell phone is that? The cell phone is a Motorola. Okay, and, and the computer? A computer is a Dell. Is a Dell, okay. And what is... Laptop. What, what, kind of, uh, what kind of operating system do you have on your computer? Windows 2000. Windows 2000? Oh, brilliant. Okay. Nice. I feel like I, I, yeah, go, go for it. I have a plug-in modem. Wow. You're, you're super well equipped, Jay. I, I, that's impressive. Okay. Thank, thank you very much, Jay. I, I feel like I, I learned a lot about you. It was, it was brilliant talking to you. <laughs> Train Moshi. Uh, so as you've just shown, um, the data uh, that was used to train the model will very strongly impact the knowledge and the capacity of the model. And so one of the challenges of training um, audio language model is actually the amount and diversity of available data that we can use to train the model. So because of that, we have to rely on text to acquire uh, knowledge. And so the first step of uh, training Moshi was actually to train a text-only large language uh, model that we called Helium, and which is uh, the which serves as the foundation uh, for Moshi. The second step is actually to, as uh, um, Alex was explaining, to perform some joint pre-training on a mix of textual data and audio data. The goal here is to learn a common representation between text and audio so that the model, when the model is generating audio, it, ac it can actually use all the knowledge that it acquired by being trained on text. And so what we want to do here is really to transfer the knowledge from text to audio. Once we've done these two steps, what we get is what we call a foundation model for audio. And so basically, that's a model that can uh, take audio as input, generate audio, but at that point, it doesn't know how to hold a conversation. 
So basically, what this model will do is that it will generate a continuous stream of audio, but it will model the different speakers, it will uh, uh, model the background noise, uh, etc. And so you cannot really interact uh, with, uh, with that model. So what we need to be able to teach Moshi how to speak, when to speak, etc., uh, we need to do what's called uh, fine-tuning on uh, conversation uh, uh, data. Again, it's very hard to, uh, to find large amounts of, uh, of such data, and so here we decided to rely on synthetic uh, dialogues uh, to, to train the model. So how did we do that? So first, we started from the uh, text-only language uh, model, and we trained it specifically so that it could generate oral-style transcripts. So what do we mean by that? is that we want Helium to be able to generate what would look like, that what would look like real transcripts uh, from real uh, discussion, like we just heard, basically. Then, uh, using those uh, transcripts, we can uh, synthesize them uh, with a text-to-speech engine that we also developed uh, uh, in-house. And finally, we can train uh, Moshi on that, uh, on that data. There's one last uh, ingredient uh, to get uh, to Moshi, and it is its voice. So we want it to give Moshi a, a consistent voice across interaction. And so for that, we worked uh, with an amazing uh, voice artist called uh, Alice, uh, who recorded uh, many uh, monologues and dialogues in different situations using different uh, uh, tone of voice, uh, uh, talking styles, etc., et that we then use to train our uh, text-to-speech engine. And maybe we can look at a small video of uh, Alice uh, recording uh, some, uh, some audio. And maybe, just maybe, you'll find what you're looking for. Then, using all, uh, all this uh, recorded data, we can, uh, we can train a, a text-to-speech engine uh, that uh, can support more than 70 uh, different uh, emotions or talking style. Uh, and actually, we wanted to showcase to you like, what this uh, uh, TTS engine, engine can uh, produce. And now what you will hear is uh, some data that was generated with our TTS. Hey, this time I'm not chatting, but rather being controlled by text. I can express more than 70 emotions and speaking styles. Like whispering. Or maybe I could sing a song. I can sound terrified. Or impersonate a pirate, ahoy matey. <clears throat> I can even speak with a very French accent, just like my inventors. <laughs> Looking forward to interacting with you. So that was Moshi. I am really excited for the future. See you in another video. Subscribe.